What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode. This is episode number 104 and today guys we start the episode off with a big big game here against Roma at the Stadio San Paolo in the Serie A and of course you guys have been seeing since the start of the season Roma have just been bulldozing their way through opponents as they currently lead the league so far and uh, we have been doing the same. Both teams are undefeated so far and we've both got off to amazing starts during this season so this is of course an early uh, title contender clash. Uh, sorry Roma have dropped down to second but even so they're, they're, we're both unbeaten is what I meant to say and um, this is an early title contender clash straight away um, during this season so this is a very big game we do take on Roma I have struggled against them previously uh, since taking over with Napoli here and they've got a very very strong side and we take them on here at the Stadio San Paolo and the first chance would come in the 21st minute it was Jovino the former Arsenal man that played a cross field ball towards the run of Jose Callahan. Fabio lost out and it just had to be him didn't it Jose Callahan, the guy that we gave to Roma for free in the summer, uh, um, for the to retain a certain, sorry, to acquire the services of uh, Florenzi, we gave Jose Callahan to Roma for free. And he comes back to haunt us, doesn't he? He makes a statement here at the Stadio San Paolo. He scores. It's a great finish by Calhoun as well. He scores with a really, really good strike into the bottom corner, off the far post, off the inside of the far post, to make it Napoli nil, Roma 1, and Calhoun making a statement clearly and saying, you should have kept me, you shouldn't have signed Florenzi, I am going to haunt you, and I'm going to be on the title-winning side this season. And uh, unfortunately, he did give Roma the lead in this game to make it 1-0, and that also brought up his third goal in the Serie A. So he's clearly got off to a very decent start at his Roma career. Good goal by Callahan, and it's Napoli nil, Roma 1. In the 42nd minute though, Roma give the ball away. It comes to our captain. Playing in this game, back from injury, Hamshik. He plays the ball out wide to Lucas, then back to Hamshik, who bursts down the right-hand side. Really good run by Hamshik, crosses the ball in, and there is Vargas, who beats Begovic uh, with the header, and makes it Napoli 1, Roma 1. So straight after coming back from injury, Hamshik gets in the team and gets an assist. So just got to love Captain Fantastic. Really good cross there. A great header by Vargas, and it is 1-1 here. So Vargas starting ahead of Balotelli and Lukaku for fitness reasons. Gets his goal and it's 1-1 here. But in the, 50 uh, in the 52nd minute here, Florenzi finds Fabio. Fabio chips the ball over the top towards Florenzi. Florenzi takes on his man and beats him as uh, the Roma defender gives the ball away. It's Florenzi who runs clear. Could he score for us against his former club? Sadly not. Begovic makes the save. And then I end up giving the ball away of Hamshik here. Passed the ball the wrong way and unfortunately Roma could counter. But uh, in the 56th minute, a good chance for Roma. A really good free kick in a day position, they roll it off, the shot comes in, Bardi makes a great save as he tips the ball onto the post and the follow up shot is saved by Bardi, so a great double save by Bardi and it's still 1-1. In the 67th minute, though, uh, we get the ball out wide to Eden Hazard here. Hazard goes down the right-hand side, gets past his man with a nice little fake shot, keeps on going down the right-hand side, crosses the ball in towards Mario Balotelli off the bench, and Begovic, well, he had his blushes spared there because I thought Begovic almost just palmed the ball into his own net there. That was so weird how the ball sort of just flicked backwards there. Um, but uh, thankfully, it did go into the side net, and thankfully for Roma, I should say, it did go into the side net, and it was still 1-1. And from the corner, Agbonna's header was cleared off the line, and unfortunately, we just couldn't seem to find that second goal in this game. In the 75th minute, though, a good chance for Roma. Their free kick was struck by Yannick, but the shot went wide of the post. So still 1-1 uh, as things stood here. And it looked like was, uh, the points would be shared. But uh, from the goal kick, we played about that wide to Eden Hazard. He's got the pace to beat Javinho, and he rolls the ball through to Lorenzo Insigne. Insigne gets past his man. Nice little bit of agility. He shoots. It's blocked. Roma failed to clear it. And it falls to Vargas. He puts the ball into the back of the net. So the Chilean gets his second goal of the game. And again, I made a very, very good decision. It was a brave decision to start Vargas ahead of Lukaku and Balotelli. Both of them have got off to an amazing start. But I made the decision, and once again, it was going to pay off. Vargas had both goals here. Napoli 2, Roma 1. And as I said, Vargas, like, seriously, he's he's so good. You know, he really is. It's, a, it's amazing he can't get into the starting eleven because he's so good. And he's a third-choice striker. You know, he really is a fantastic finisher of the ball. Got a lot of pace as well. And uh, that goal made it Napoli 2, Roma 1. So he came from behind to lead in this game. Both goals coming from Vargas, and I was very, very happy that my decision to start him ahead of Balotelli and Lukaku was indeed paying off. But another good chance would fall here in the 90th minute to Roma, as they were desperate to score an, uh, score an equalising goal and preserve their unbeaten start to the season. The ball got played through to Jovino, but De Cilio, or De Cilio would not want to see that again. He sells Bardi short, uh, short, he makes the save, but Bonner takes down Callahan in the area. 
and unfortunately the referee awards a penalty. It was a debatable penalty, I gave the ball away, it was my mistake, but uh, I gave the ball away. But as I made this challenge with Obono on Jose Callon, I actually thought it was a great challenge. You see the ball, uh, we make contact with the ball there before Callahan gets touched, and I thought that was a good challenge by Obono, but unfortunately the referee gave it. And if we didn't get any luck for that, I've been saying all through, you know, since joining Napoli, we never get any luck on penalty saving. Whenever we die the right way, we never save it. This time we save it, and the ball falls straight back to Yannick, who makes it 2-2. So, I mean, we just don't get any luck, do we? We just get no <laughs> luck whatsoever. It's so frustrating. It's just ridiculous. You know, the penalty for me was a bit of a debatable one. Yes, it could have been given, but I still think as we won the ball first and we didn't take the man until after the ball, it shouldn't have been given. It was given, and then from the penalty, Bardi dives the right way. It smacks off his kneecaps and then goes straight to Yannick. The ball is basically on the line, and Yannick beats Bardi to the ball and just puts it into the back of the net. So we just don't get any luck whatsoever. I can't remember the last time I saved a penalty. I really don't. It, you know, um, United were probably considered title contenders the last time we saved a penalty. It's just ridiculous. We don't ever get to save a penalty, and it's so frustrating that that one, although being saved, did end up crossing the line after Yannick put it into the empty net. So 2-2 here, and that's how the game finished. So Roma score with the last attack of the game after that penalty. It was my fault, don't get me wrong, for giving the ball away with Di Chilio, but even so, I... I, I First of all, I don't think it was a penalty, but second of all, I just didn't get the luck with the save. But 2-2 uh, to the final score, very frustrating because that would have been a big, big win for us early on during the season. But unfortunately, we have to settle for a point and both teams remain unbeaten. So this is going to be a very fierce rivalry already, I can already tell. And 2-2 uh, was the final score. <clears throat> But uh, after that, we saw that Bruno Avini is having some doubts about leaving the club, but uh, I don't really care if he leaves or not, so we'll, we'll wait and see how that plays out. But uh, after that, we took on Athletic Bilbao here in the Champions League. Of course, we've uh, played two games so far in the group stages. We've won one and we've drawn one. We beat PSV Eindhoven by four goals to one at the Stadio San Paolo. We drew against FC Copenhagen away in Scandinavia, one goal each after they scored a last-minute equaliser. So we've got off to an OK start. We're still unbeaten in the season completely both in the league and in Europe but uh, we do want to get a win in this game and sort of progress a little bit further and um, you know sort of set out our stall for the second half of the, Europe, um, of the Champions League campaign I think I just said the Europa League didn't I um, set out our stall for the second half of the Champions League group stage you know show that we have been a good force for the first three games and um, show that we're a good side but uh, anyway the first chance will come to Athletic Bilbao in the second minute here eventually the ball gets crossed into the box towards Leandro we get the ball away and DeMarco strikes it and finds the bottom corner what a superb half volley by the Bilbao player. That was incredible. It really was. And number 10 makes it 1-0 to the away side. You know, in the in the game against Roma, I had some doubts about whether the second goal, you know, was complete luck or just you know um, bad defending by me. But in, in for this goal by Demarcos, you can't take anything away from the strike. What a superb half volley right into the bottom corner. Nothing that Bardi could do about it. And a Fleck Bilbao take a shock lead here away from home at the Stadio San Paolo and get themselves in the lead. So Napoli nil, Athletic Bilbao one. They get the goal and it's Demarcos who scores it with a lovely half volley in to the bottom corner. But so the second chance would come in the 31st minute here. We get the ball with Nostasic and play the ball out wide towards Vargas. Vargas finds Florenzi, who finds Romelu Lukaku. Lukaku gets past him out with a lovely little step over. Plays the ball backwards to, uh, towards Jamali. Jamali gets on the ball. He's looking for a runner. He finds him in the shape of Vargas out wide here. Vargas gets past his mouth with a lovely piece of skill. Keeps on running, keeps on running. Crosses the ball in. And at the far post, the header loops up onto the bar. And Bill Bow cleared the ball away. So we just weren't getting the luck in this episode. Unfortunately, that shot... Uh, Sorry, that header looped onto the bar and Bilbao managed to clear it. We kept the chance alive though here. Some nice passing release for Lorenzi. He chipped the ball over the top towards Carrasco. He runs clear. Shoots on the half volley. Toselli makes the save. And unfortunately, the Bilbao defender um, trying to clear the ball away just sort of plucks up in the air. And Toselli has a simple catch. It's still 1 0 here. In the 45th minute though, the last chance for us would fall as Florenzi gets on the ball. Tries to get past Romalo. Crosses the ball in towards Lukaku. It's cleared away. On the stroke of half time, we had one last chance. It would fall towards Nastasic uh, down the left hand side here. Gets past his man, crosses the ball in, what a cross by Nasazic as well, and there is um, El Kaduri at the far post, who puts the ball into the back of the net to make it Napoli 1, Bilbao 1, and we level the score up on the stroke of half time, so El Kaduri gets the goal, what a cross by Nasazic as well, I had him starting a left back in this game, and he whips in an incredible cross, that is worthy of a, uh, a brilliant fullback, attacking fullbacks cross, that is, that's a brilliant cross by Nasazic, picks out El Kaduri right on the foot of uh, his right foot, and he puts the ball into the bottom corner, no chance for Toselli, and that makes it Napoli 1, Athletic Bilbao 1, so we do manage to equalise here, and get our 
ourselves back on level terms. In the 49th minute day, Bill Bal came forward here looking to score the second goal and put themselves back in front. It was uh, Benya down the right hand side who played the ball through to Suzetta or whatever, crosses the ball in, and Demarcus uh, scores his second goal of the game. So this guy is just so hard to contain. It's another goal for Demarcus. He makes it Napoli 1, Athletic Bill Bal 2, and the Spanish side were in front for the second time in the game. But in the 56th minute here, you see Lukaku win the ball. He plays it through to Florenzi here. Florenzi gets past him now with a fake shot. Really nice piece of skill, and he shoots. Unfortunately, it's deflected and goes out for a corner. But uh, from the corner here, we cross the ball in with Brian Carrasco towards El Kaduri at the far post. And what a header that is, right into the far corner. And for the second time in the game, El Kaduri scores the equalising goal. And it's Napoli 2, Athletic Bilbao 2. El Kaduri gets it, and it's a really, really good header there. I watched this again, and Carrasco's corner is brilliant. El Kaduri's header is fantastic. But what on earth is the defender on the line doing? As you see, he's on the post, he's on the post, he's ready just in case the header comes. And just before El Kaduri heads it, he walks walks away. That was just ridiculous. Just before, You see him do it there. Just before El Kaduri gets his head to the ball, he, he just walks off the post and had he just stood there and had a bit more discipline, he may have been able to get the ball away. But even so, take nothing away from the de uh, delivery of the corner by Carrasco. Take nothing away from the header by El Kaduri. It was really good. And for the second time in the game, El Kaduri equalises and it's Napoli 2, Bilbao 2. But a good chance for Bilbao here. Uh, the shot came in, but uh, a good save by Bardi keeps the score at 2 2. So, Athletic Bilbao almost put themselves in front for the third time in the game, but they couldn't do it. And it was still 2 2 here. We make a change here. Balotelli comes on for uh, for Florenzi. So, Mario Balotelli, who was on the bench, now comes on. We needed him really to get ourselves back into the uh, to the game. And uh, in the 81st minute here, you see us clear the ball away towards Zapata, making a rare appearance for us here in this game. Gets past his man, keeps on going. He's got a lot of pace. He rolls the ball through to Balotelli off the bench, takes a couple of touches, runs clear and blasts the ball past to Selly. so the substitute pays off, it's Mario Balotelli who gets the goal and he makes it Napoli 3, Athletic Bilbao 2, so with 8 minutes to go it's Balotelli who gets it and we make it 3-2 and go in front for the first time in this game and the sub clearly paid off, in the 88th minute uh, Athletic Bilbao give the ball away, Jamali makes a great interception, we go on a break we play the ball through to Lukaku, Lukaku finds Balotelli, he fakes shots past his man, then heel teal flicks, uh, heel -teal flicks flicks past uh, another man, gets himself into the box and puts the ball into the back of the net to make it 4-2. So <clears throat> two goals for Mario Balotelli uh, late on in this game, makes it 4-2 and we go ahead and rescue the three points. So both goals from Balotelli uh, 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 see us get the win and uh, the goals before that, both goals are scored by El Kaduri. So two for El Kaduri, two for Balotelli off the bench and we get the win by four goals to two and pick up another three points in the Champions League. So we are still unbeaten this season so far. And that feels very, very good. So a 4-2 victory. And um, we left it late. We left it very, very late. And we did require a substitute in Balotelli. But I was still very pleased to get the win. And uh, that would mean we now have seven points after three games in this Champions League group stage. But as always, guys, a big thank you for watching today's video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the video and if you have enjoyed having four episodes of Career Mode uploaded this weekend, then please leave a like. It only takes a second to click that like button. And it really does help my channel out. So uh, thanks for watching. Leave a like if you did enjoy the video and had four videos this weekend. And um, yeah, I will see you for the next episode of Career Mode tomorrow afternoon.